In the last couple of lessons, we've been looking at the electrolysis of substances. And what that did was it converted the compounds into the individual elements. Now, when we looked at NaCl a few lessons ago, we said that it combines in a lattice structure like this due to the fact that it is ionic. And we said that we would have to heat it up to a very high temperature if we want to try and separate or, over, or break these bonds over here. And so when we do that, we would end up with Na or sodium ions and chlorine ions. But heating it up is not the only way to separate it. An easier way is to simply place it into water. And if the NaCl is soluble, which it is, NaCl is very soluble, it would simply dissolve. And so what happens is the following. We would take the NaCl, which would be in a solid form, and we would place it inside water. And what would happen is the water molecules, which are H2O, would surround themselves around the NaCl particles, and there would be a force of attraction occurring. There would be an intermolecular, intermolecular force of attraction. For example, we know that sodium is positively charged, and we know that the oxygens inside water, they are partially negative, and so we can see that there is a, there would be a force of attraction over there, and then the H's, which are positive, they would surround the CL's, which are negative, but this would take place, well, there would be trillions and trillions of these water molecules, and if you add all of the forces of all of those water molecules, what you would see is that NaCl would actually pull apart into Na+, plus and Cl minus. And then all the water molecules would be surrounded. So you would have a whole lot of water molecules surrounding the sodium like that. And this is actually what we call aqueous. Aqueous is when something is surrounded by water. Okay, So we could either heat up NaCl, and that's where we called it molten, or we can dissolve it in water, and then we'd call it aqueous. Now, not all substances can be dissolved in water. Not all of them would separate. We say that those substances are insoluble, and that is due to the fact that these bonds can sometimes be extremely strong, and so the water molecules are not going to be strong enough to pull the atoms apart. Okay, but that's more of grade 10 knowledge. I'm just giving you guys a bit of a background so you can understand what's happening. So the main thing to realize is that we're going to throw this NaCl into water and we're going to have Na pluses and Cl minuses floating around just like we saw in the previous examples when we were using a molten solution. However, and here's the important part, because we're using water we mustn't forget that there is water floating around. Okay, now that poses a little bit of a problem for us because water has the ability to be electrolyzed itself. And so it might be electrolyzed instead of the Na and the Cl. So how would we know this? Well, luckily we have our table. So what we go do is we go find all of these on the table. Now the Na plus is up here at the top, Cl minus is here at the bottom. Now there are many waters on this table. However, the ones that you want to use is the one at negative 0, 0,83, so it's this water here, and then the one down at the bottom of the table at 1,23. Because the other waters are involved with other substances, such as water over here with nitrogen oxide or NO3, we're not interested in any of those. You won't look at those in your curriculum. We are interested in this one up here at negative 0, 0,83 and the one down here at 1,23. Now the competition takes place, and so what we do now is these two on the left, they are going to compete with each other, and then these two are the, on the right are going to compete with each other. But let's first see where they're going to compete. So we know that this battery is negative, or it's negative on the left-hand side here. So this electrode over here is negative, and so it's going to attract the positive sodium, and it will attract one of these waters, so let's say it attracts that water over there. Now, those are going to compete. And so 
on our table we can see that we are now comparing these two so Kevin how do we compare them well good question what we do is we look at this arrow going down the side and we see which one is lower down because we can see that the lower down you go you become an increasing oxidizing we have an increasing oxidizing ability and so the water is going to win and so in fact sodium nothing is going to happen to the sodium this Na plus is simply going to keep floating around and nothing's going to happen to it okay and so that reaction over here is going to take place and so let's write that down it's going to be 2H2O plus two electrons gives us hydrogen gas plus two OH minus okay so sodium did not get reduced at all now on the other terminal or on the other electrode where which is positive we know that that will attract Cl minus and it will also attract water molecules okay water molecules are going to be attracted to both sides and so now those two are going to compete and so here the competition is taking place down here and so what we do is we look at the arrow and we see that the higher up on the right hand side you go the better your reducing ability becomes and so look at this guys water is going to win this one as well and so Cl- is not going to be oxidized instead water is going to be oxidized and so at this terminal or this electrode we're going to have 2H2O becoming oxygen plus oh no, I've blocked out that thing over there 4 hydrogen ions plus four electrons and so if you were to try and electrolyze sodium chloride by using water well good luck to you because you're not actually gonna be able to do anything the water is going to win okay now your teacher at school might have mentioned the fact that chlorine which was down here at the bottom can sometimes win instead of the water and they might have given you a couple other examples trust me they hardly ever test um, any of the other examples so I'm just gonna explain one exception to the rule we can allow this chlorine over here to win under special circumstances what we do is we make the concentration of the chlorine much higher than what it normally is so what we do is we we add a much con a, a, a higher concentration of NaCl um, and so instead you're gonna have a whole lot of Na plus a lot more Na plus and a lot more Cl minus and so what happens is that the chlorine because we up its concentration so much at this terminal over here chlorine can actually win instead of water because there will be a lot more chlorines okay now why is this possible the reason is the following guys these voltage numbers give us an indication of how close the two substances are to each other in terms of their ability to oxidize or reduce this water reaction has a voltage of 1.23 volts and this chlorine voltage is 1.36 volts can you see that they are fairly close together so because they are so close together we can override the system by just changing the concentrations okay however we that's the only thing you need to remember all the other times you simply need to look at which ones higher up and lower down okay um, for example if I look here at water and sodium look at the look at the voltage value of sodium negative 2.71 and look at the one for water negative 0.83 that is a massive difference and so even if you increase the concentration of Na plus you're not going to get it to reduce instead of the water okay so Kevin how would I know when and I can't when can I and when can't I guys that is a long story don't worry about it trust me just remember that if they use concentrated chlorine or sodium chloride then the chlorine will win over here instead of the water so look out in the test for words such as dilute if they say dilute then it means that the chlorine is of has a very low concentration and so then the water will win but if they start using words like concentrated then it means that there's a lot of chlorine 
and then the chlorine will win. Usually in the exams they try and make it quite obvious so don't stress too much about that and this is the only one that you need to remember. They don't test you on the other types, okay? So I hope that that makes sense. I will reinforce this in future videos or in the next couple of lessons. Thanks for watching.